Welcome everyone to Kobe as we take on Iniesta and friends in today's J1 League game. But before we get on with that, we do of course have some games to catch up on as well as a bit of transfer news and more. So without further ado, let's hop into Football Manager 21 and crack on with today's episode. Okay, so before we hop into our catch up games and have a look at some transfer news, we have headed here to the notes screen. As you can see, I've unticked the show all notes because I want to keep it a secret until I went through this nice little intro. So, first of all, we have a couple of matters to discuss with players, Fukai and Fukumori. Yes, they are basically trying to push their way out of the club, go to bigger teams. FC Marinos, I believe, were the ones who started this all. Yes, Yokohama F. Marinos were the ones who came after Fukai, that upset him, and that was after they did the same with Fukumori. Fukumori, again, Yokohama. So we've had to agree prices that we will sell them for. Not high, not really low, but decent amounts. We'll have a look at them in just a second. And Takamin also wants to discuss a personal matter of basically wanting to play more. He wanted to be sent out on loan. I decided, you know what, if we've got Fukumori and Fukai causing problems and they're probably going to be sold anyway, we may as well keep Takamin, play him and give him the game time here instead of sending him away to get it elsewhere. So, Fukumori first of all, how much is Fukumori listed for? Well, if we just go over to his player page, I apologise for the noise in the background, I can't do anything about that unfortunately. Three teams are in the running for him, we have Kashiwa, Ray Sol, Vissel Kobe and Yokohama F Marinos. 775k asking price. He is valued at 625k, so a little bit higher than his valuation, but that's as high as I could get him to go. Then we have Fukai. Now, Fukai, very similar situation. If we go over to here, Fukai, 25 years of age, by the way. If we head onto this page, only F Marinos wants him at the moment. 825,000. Don't ask me how I managed to get him to accept a higher asking price than our starting centre back, but yes, valued again 625 grand, and that is the situation with those two. Like I said, tack him in. I'm probably going to push him into Fukumori's position, swap him then around with Havanier. So Havanier is the ball playing defender, and tack him in is just our normal central defender. If they, of course, leave the club, but that is the plans with those. What have we done on the transfer front? Well, not a whole lot coming in, to be honest. Tanaka and Havanir were already here, of course. Now, a lot of players have gone out. I completely forgot that I got rid of Jay Bufroid as well. So, we have got rid of Riku Dan Zakai. He's the fair choice left attacking mid, I believe. Sent him out on loan, getting a bit of money for him. We don't particularly need him. He's just sort of a backup to our backup. So he's gone out on loan. Sato, an amazing young 16-year-old. Teams have actually been coming in trying to buy him. We do not want to sell him. He's a player for our future. So sent him out on loan. He's going to develop nicely over at Tegavajaro. Jaro, something like that. I've completely butchered it. Can we go over here? No, it doesn't show the teams there. I'm not interested anymore because he's out on loan. But a couple of teams were interested in trying to acquire him. I told them to clear off because I wasn't selling him. I believe he was only offering a couple of hundred thousand. He's valued at 61 grand. I think they offered about 150 grand or something for him. No, no, just no. We've seen how much his potential is, as you can see. He's at least three and a half star, four and a half star potential. Even if he's only the three and a half star, he's going to be worth at least half a million. So half a million to the million range at least is what I would have had to have been offered to even consider selling him. So Sato, like I said, out for development. Unfortunately, we don't have any players coming in quite yet. If you noticed on this team, we have been looking at a goalkeeper from F Marinos. We've offered him a contract. Obviously, he won't be coming in straight away, but when his contract expires, a two grand offer for Paul Obina. Obi, who is a solid goalkeeper, as you can see, his stats are pretty decent. He's valued at an estimate of 400,000 to 1.1 million, although his valuation is 100 grand. That is what they would, of course, would take for us to purchase him outright. So, we're saving ourselves a little bit of cash, getting a decent goalkeeper for our 
rotation, he will probably be our backup goalkeeper, if I'm to be honest, which does mean we can get rid of a whacker, I believe it is, on our bench. And yeah, we can have a nice younger developing goalkeeper coming on occasionally in cup games, developing and hopefully working his way into the team. But that is all for the transfer fronts and the news. So without further ado, let's hop on over, catch up with some games and then crack on with today's game. Okay, so the first game saw us head to Yokohama FC. In fact, we didn't head to them. We welcomed them to our home. I am a little bit blind. So we started things off with a lovely penalty into the bottom corner and then doubled up with Nakashima drilling one into the bottom left-hand side. As you can see, the team all around did a solid job. Songkrad's in on 6.6, needs to do a little bit better. And Fukai coming off the bench needs to do a bit better. Oh, Jesus, I didn't realise AK47 only got 6.5. He definitely needs to do a bit better. But overall, as you can see, 7.2 and a goal from Nakashima, 7.5 from Lopez. Kimitai, 7.4, 7.6 and that penalty from Ko Mai. We had some outstanding performers and quite frankly, as you can see from the match statistics, we dominated this game. But how did we get on in the other two? Right everyone, so as you can see, the second game was possibly the most boring game that could have happened against FC Tokyo. So, as we head on over to the left hand side, the match statistics, there was one whole shot on target, admittedly we got it, but it did take us 9 attempts in order to do so. They had 5 and 0 on target. That meant a 0.73 XG for us to a 0.51 from them. 8 corners to 4, 10 fouls to 14, 0 yellow cards, 3 yellow cards, 89% passing to 89% passing, 47% possession to 53 both teams were useless, quite frankly, in this one. We had a lot of players underperforming, as you can see. Lucas and Songkrasen in the starting lineup with 6.4s. Need a lot more from them. And then substitutes in AK47, again getting a 6.6 .6 this time. It did improve, but not by much. And Ono with a 6.5. That, of course, then led us into our final game. So, how do we get on in that third one? Okay, so as you can see, the third game was a little bit more interesting than the second. This one, still a nil-nil draw, though. We had a goal disallowed on the ninth minute from Miyazawa. Now, if we quickly click on that, I believe it was Nakashima on his awful 6.1, who denied us a brilliant goal. So, let's head on in. Komai throwing it into Lopez. Lopez back to Komai nicely. Gets it over to Miyazawa, the guy who would have got the goal. Crossfield ball to Suga now. Holding up the ball nicely. Gets it to Songkrazin. Nakashima shot his block. Songkrazin over to Suga. Suga then holds up the ball nicely on the edge of the box. Plays it over to Miyazawa. Back to Kim. Over to Suga. Lovely triangles now. Holding up the ball nicely. Miyazawa's found plenty of space on the edge. Suga finds him. Blasts it at the goalkeeper. Who pokes it into the goal. But it was disallowed because... Nakashima decided to stray about a meter offside. So that's how that game went. Again, Lucas, 6.5, my friend, you need to do better. 6.6 .6 from Lopez, 6.1 from Nakashima. The rest of the starting lineup didn't do too bad. And our substitutes weren't too bad either, apart from Mr. AK47 yet again. He's firing blanks at the moment. So hopefully we can pick things up a little bit more going into today's game. So, without further ado, let's head on over to the dressing room of the Kobe Wing Stadium and crack on with today's match. Okay, so we've made it to the tactical meeting screen. It is a calm 28 degrees Celsius for today's game. 18,636 tickets sold out of a capacity of 34,000. Very good pitch condition. Now, first of all, we have... Balance too cautious, I think that's a reasonable approach considering we're versing one of the best teams in the league. We are then going to change our opposition instructions, we are going to do all of these and then we're going to head into the dressing room. So, who is our team for today? Well, I don't see any changes to be made. Miyazawa is a little bit lacking match sharpness, Lucas, same situation. Kimitai is suspended and thus this is our team. So, for today's game, we have Nakano in goal, a backline of Suga, Havania, Fukumori, and Komai. Takamin will slot into central midfield for today's game, instead of, of course, being in that back line. He is alongside Fukai. On the left-hand side is Songkrazin. On the right, AK-47, Lopez in the middle, 
and Nakashima up front. A bench consisting of Owaka, Yanagi, Tanaka, Kaneko, Arano, Ono and Ogashiwa. So without further ado, let's head on over to pitch side and crack on with today's game. So Fukai, Takamin and AK47 are lacking match sharpness. Okay. So a couple of issues in terms of tactical familiarity. Well, you learn it. And Awaka, to be honest, you're probably not going to be playing. You're probably going to be sat on the bench. So it is time. They are indeed starting off with Iniesta and Abraham Lincoln. Okay, not Abraham, but Lincoln is up front for them. They have Lincoln and Iniesta. They have Yamaguchi, who has an amazing amount of caps, I believe. For Japan, I can't remember exactly how many, but I'm pretty sure he is well capped. And yeah, we're just going to tell the lads to go out there and impress me. So punch fists and let's go out there. Put on a good show. Don't expect us to particularly win today's game. But we want to show a good account of ourselves, you know. We want to show Iniesta that he's a little bit washed up. And he should not be getting 400 grand a week here in Japan. He should be paid like the rest of us. Around that 20,000 or so mark. So, Iniesta is going to be taking this free kick. He's probably going to make me regret those words right now. Lovely save by Nakano. Thank you, Nakano. I appreciate that one. Sticking up for me and my rants about Iniesta's ridiculous contract here in Japan. Hiroshima is currently 1-0 up against Yokohama. Speaking of Hiroshima, by the way, we are going to slot in a game against them in the next episode. I did believe a few episodes back I mentioned the Empress Cup for the next game, but I think Hiroshima will be the next one. It's a televised game, it's away from home, and it slots in quite nicely with the current fixture list. Now, Nakashima drilling one in the bottom right-hand side whilst I'm distracted. Very good effort from the lad. Komai delivering a beautiful cross. Horrible header away by Iniesta, by the way. Straight back to Komai. AK47 just passes it across to Nakashima, and they punish him. So, Iniesta, drop your contract down, my friend. Maybe your team can get some decent players in, you know? Surround you with some half-decent players if you just, I don't know, take 200 grand a week. An extra 200 grand a week would go very far in this league indeed. But we will take it. We don't care. It's 1-0 at half time. We've got 9 shots to their 3. 3 on target to their 2. 0.89 XG to an 0.36. 8 corners to 3. 6 fouls to 6. 1 yellow card to 0 yellow cards. 92% passing. If we can keep that up, that would be great. To 84. 60% possession to 40. So, Fukumori has a yellow card. Nakashima has a goal. And we are currently in the lead. So, I'm happy with performance. Keep it going, lads. Everybody is happy. Nobody is really letting us down. We have Komai and Suga, who could do a little bit better on 6.6s. But you know what? The Vest and Vissel Kobe, a solid team. They're on the wings. They're in those difficult positions. 6.6 isn't too bad. Nakashima, though, running through their defense once more. And then he... I don't know what that was. I really don't know what that was. I don't know if he's in for the corner flag, the goal, or just some guy in the crowd, but it was an awful attempt. That is for sure. Now, we are rolling up substitution time. I almost missed it. Thankfully, the highlight has dropped in on the 62nd minute. So after this highlight, we shall make some substitutes. Tack him in, tries well. Oh, it has gone over the top. Nakashima forces a save from Okie Doki. And yes, we have a corner. Lopez will be the one to deliver. Whips it in at the near post, nod it away. Fukumori will collect this one though. Now, the highlight is over. Substitution time is upon us. And our opponents for the next episode are currently 2 0 up against Yokohama. Yokohama is having a rough time right now. 11 points from 22 games. They are vastly away from Sagan Tosu, who was bottom of the league at one point. There is a big gap forming between them now, which is not looking good for Yokohama. In fact, there's quite a gap between them and just getting into that 18th place playoff against the team in the league below. But enough about that. We have substitutes. We don't care about relegation because we are not in that scrap. So we have a 6.5 from Suga. Now, Suga, you can come off for Mr. Yanagi. We can then drop back Takamin and we'll try out this partnership at the back 
and we'll bring on Arano into this position. So we've got Bukai and Arano in our central midfield. Those two are off. Do I want to rest up anyone else right now? Probably not the best idea. We want to keep pushing, make sure we stay on top of this game. So we're going to just make that double substitution at the back, threshing up. Hopefully, Komai can hold out. He's dropped to a 6.5. He's fluctuating between 6.5 and 6.6 .6 right now. So hopefully, he doesn't have too much of an issue. Lopez, he's a bit tired. And same with Song Krasin. So we're going to rest up Lopez. Lopez, you are going to come off. Stick your feet up. I should have probably took Song Kraz in off because he's actually having a worse game and tired as well. But he can hold up for a little bit, surely. Oki will hoof it up though. Komai intercepts. He's got AK-47 on the right, but instead he goes over to Song Kraz in. Song Kraz in, of course, a little bit tired here on the left-hand side. Has Yanagi in support. Yanagi should have plenty of... Okay. Ignore Yanagi. Just try and chip the goalkeeper and just give it straight to Oki. Oki kicks it up to Iniesta. Iniesta on the counter-attack. Oh, Song Krasin, you've got to put a foot in there, my friend. It's a ball over the top, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, and it's chipped over Nakano. Furuhashi has gone and got the equaliser. Song Krasin's missed inception, missed attempt at anything. Look, he just stops next to him, doesn't even kick his foot out. Should have just kicked his foot out. It would have gone back to their goalkeeper. The issue would have been cleared up. But no, Song Krasin... Making me regret not taking him off and taking off Lopez instead. So, half of that error probably can be laid out my door, to be honest. I should have taken off Song Krasin. But, at the same time, Song Krasin is the guy who made the mistake. So, we have to give a little bit of it to him as well. But, I think that was an admirable performance against a team that should really be destroying us at their place. We had 17 shots to their 5. 7 on target to their 3, a 1.56 XG to a 0.53, 14 corners to 3, 10 fouls to 9, 1 yellow card to 1 yellow card, 91% passing to 81. Did drop a little bit, but I'm happy with a 91 at the end of the game. 63% possession to a 37. My ballpark figure is always get it in the 90s. I'm happy with that passing. Now, dressing room. I'm happy with that performance. I am. It wasn't the best finish to it, but overall... I'm happy with that performance. We currently sit in 7th place, by the way. Yes, we can drop to 8th if Raysol win, and Raysol will probably win their game. But we are in a nice little spot. I don't see us pushing on and getting another 8-point gap break on the Osaka Twins, but I think where we're at, not a bad little spot. I think next season we can push on for these top 4 spots because we are probably going to finish in this sort of area. In this sort of 5th to 10th, sort of back of the door race, I think we can keep this going. Okay, not 5th, because 5th is sort of in that pack. I would say like 6th down to... Mm, actually, 6th goes quite far down. 6th to 10th is probably the sort of ballpark I'd say we're going to finish. They are expecting us down 11 or 12th, but I think we can get towards the top of that stack of teams. And yes, make a good account of ourselves before trying to push on for the top four in the next season, hopefully. Now, as you can see, we're going to keep scouting this 18-year-old. And this guy, we shall also keep scouting. And, well, we have 11 more to go through, so I'm not going to make you sit through me going through all of those. Instead, like I said, we'll come back here for the San Freki Hiroshima game. And then, I guess, we're going to skip over this Vortis game in the league. We'll come back for the one in the Emperor's Cup. So, when we come into the Emperor's Cup game, we'll have some sort of idea on how we perform against them at home before we head away. And then we'll probably do a double header on the Red Dragons game before we move further on. But before we conclude this episode, I have realised there is the next round draw for the Emperor's Cup. So we're going to head on forward to that, slot it at the end of this episode, and I'll see you over there in just a second. Okay, so before we hop into that cup draw, it looks like we have some news on the Obi-Wan Kenobi front. Okay, he's not Obi-Wan Kenobi, but he is Paul Obina Obi, and he wants to tweak up the contract we offered him previously. As you might remember, we offered him 2000 per week, no extras, just 2000 per week, back up. He wants to retain as backup, but as you can see, he's probably going to be pushing for a little bit more wage because there's interest from the Antlers. So let's head into the negotiation. Yep, he wants an extra 400 
for no reason. Right, let's try and negotiate this down. We'll give you an extra 200. How about that? Fine, you can have the 400. I don't care. Worst negotiator in the world. I gave him 400. He wanted 400. But I'm not here to negotiate over 400 pound a week. That'll do. I just want him through the door. I don't want any more hassle. So that's that sorted. 2,400 instead of 2,000. And hopefully no other teams will come in and push that up more. So that is the Powell OB negotiation. Now to head on over to that cup draw. Okay, everyone, a bit of double good news here. We are finally at the Emperor's Cup draw. And as you can see above it, OB has set to sign for us. So, pal, OB has agreed to the deal for an extra 400 per week. And yeah, so we're just going to accept that, get him signed up before he asks for any more money. Because as you've seen, my negotiation skills are absolutely terrible. Now, in terms of the Emperor's Cup quarterfinal draw, there are 14 teams going in for the four matches. As we know, we yet to play the next match. The next match, of course, is the episode after next. Don't hold me to that, but I believe episode after next, Hiroshima, then we verse Vortis in the Emperor's Cup. And yes, let's draw the team. So first we have Yamaga in the J2 League. They would be a great opposition for us to draw. We're probably not going to get them though. We are going to get them. Let's go. If we can get past Vortis, we're probably guaranteed a semi-final. Let's be honest. We should be able to beat Yamaga. We'll have a look how good Yamaga is relative to the rest of their division. But they're in a league completely below us. We are going very strong in our league. And these are the other games. So let's head on over to Yamaga. They are 11th in their division. And they are expected to finish about 11th. Okay, so they are exactly where they should be. Down here in 11th place. A mid-table team not pushing for promotion. We should be able to beat them. So I thank you all for joining us in today's episode. I hope you all have a lovely night. And goodbye.